Hey guys, this is Roshi with a 6.87 gameplay update for Dota 2. Um, I've already been over the patch notes. I've actually already done uh, a video. Uh, I felt it was too long. And also, I've been into the test client and had a little play around with things, uh, which has changed my view on a few certain things. So I feel it would be better to do a shorter one. So I'll skim over a few things that I feel are you know, something that you can need to come across yourself or kind of a slightly irrelevant and stuff. And be able to touch a little bit more on certain things. I'm going to do this in three parts as well. I'm going to do the actual general stuff and the terrain changes, which is obviously going to be this one, which is a bit shorter, then onto the, the items and then onto the heroes. So if there's certain ones you're interested in, you can skip to like the next video and stuff. But uh, for now, like I say, I'll just go over this one. This is going to be the shortest one um, with the general updates. Um, general updates are ranked or pick reworked. Before the picking phase begins, there's a 15 second voting phase to ban heroes. Each player votes for a different hero after the top heroes that were voted for it will randomly be selected and banned um, this is similar to the old draft thing that everyone was wanting and talking about um, where everyone gets a choice to ban but in this case you all get to, to ban um, and then like it says half of the heroes so five heroes are going to be banned and it's done completely randomly the random ban selection will choose at most three teams from one specific team so if like two people vote for the same one kind of thing then say in this patch obviously there'd be an invoker and an OD on both teams so if both teams vote for it there's more chance that it's going to get banned overall but it's good that they're doing it so that only five get banned because if everyone got to ban ten there's certain heroes that never get played and I know like in the last patch in the last few patches there's been heroes that's like don't want to play against it but if it never ever gets played in ranked then what's the point um, at all really do you know what I mean uh, so it's it's good that they're doing that so it is going to slip through the net sometimes <clears throat> other ridiculous stuff so this is really cool i like the way they've done this um i like the spin that they've put on it they've obviously put quite a bit of thought into it and think how can we do this fairly because i, I invoke has been ridiculous this patch but i enjoy playing invoker but i don't want to play him every game so if i don't want to play him i'll ban him if i do want to play him i'll say look don't don't ban him i want it if we've got first pick and he gets through i'll pick him so it, it's just one of those really <laughs> i think this is really good i like this um we'll see how it works out but it's good um scan ability now available in the UI, there's a little box in the top left of the minimap. So the minimap's down here. In the top left, there's a little box. When Reborn came out, everyone was like, "What the hell is that box for?" We now know it was for an ability called Scan. Scans the targeted AOE, nine hundred AOE for eight seconds indicates whether there's enemy heroes in that area during the eight seconds. Starts on cooldown, has a global team-wide cooldown of four point five minutes. That's like uh, Glyph, obviously with a short cooldown, slightly. Does not consider units inside the Rojan pit, but does consider smoked units, does not show how many heroes are there, just if there are any. Basically, I'll click short, there's a little circle, obviously 900 AOE, and you'll click the scan, you'll put it onto a part of the map and you'll click it, and a little thing will go around, and during the duration of it being there, the 8 seconds, if someone comes into it, it'll be green. If it's red, it means there's someone in there, so if it turns red, it means someone's walked into that area. Um, I, I know a lot of high level players aren't going to like this, but I actually think it's pretty good. It kind of teaches map awareness. Pros already, pros and high level MR people already have map awareness, that's how they got there, do you know what I mean, it's a really key part of Dota, but this is going to encourage people to be a little bit more aware of the surrounds, so I actually think this is really good, I know I'm going to get flamed for it, but I think it's really good. It also kind of counteracts the fact that in low level play particularly, and, some, and sometimes high level play that people don't buy wards, this can kind of help you with that problem, so you can just scan the area yourself or stuff like that and say look, if you had a ward there we'd know exactly who was there. So I, th I do think this helps with map, map awareness teaching to new people. Start H HP increase, so everyone gets um, 20 extra HP at the start. HP per strength increased by one, so every strength you get one extra HP. Like I say, this is self-explanatory, so I'm just going to whiz over it pretty quick. Hero base mana increased from 0 to 50, so you'll always have a base of 50 mana, even if you get all your mana stolen off you by... Um, so if you die repeatedly to silence or and you got a really crap mana pool or something, you'll still have to like cast the, the lower spells maybe once if you're lucky. Mana per in reduced so you get so like this went up the how much money you get per intelligence you have. Intelligence now increases your spell damage by one percent versus sixteen intelligence points. So if you get a hundred, it gives you roughly six percent bonus. I don't know how this is going to work. It's going to be interesting to see. But certain heroes do stack up on intelligence items. People like Invoker and the old OD build used to stack up on it to put damage onto your ult. I don't know if you consider doing it again. Um, same rules for what is uh, Aether Lens spell. 
Uh, they, they touch on this again later on. Um, I kind of feel like they should have put it together, but you'll, you'll see it in a bit. Lane creeps health upgrade, so, so every seven and a half minutes they get an extra two more than they used to. So let's just get harder to kill. Not really. I don't really think you're going to notice it a great deal. The tier two towers damage now the same as tier three, so they hit harder. Towers now grant an armor aura, an armor aura to allied heroes. So it's just the heroes, it's not the creeps. Um, tier one grants one, tier two, two. Tiers 2, 3 and 4 grant 3 armour. So this encourages fighting under tower. Um, if you're defending the tower, you want to stay under your tower. Um, it's going to make it a lot harder to take them and stuff. And it's going to be easier to defend them. Which is going to result in a bit more team fighting. Um, cool. I think I always thought towers should give more than just the attack that they do. It's, it's good that they are like um, certain games that where you stand near your own units. And um, they give you like regen and stuff like that. So this is pretty cool. I like this. Uh, these, are all, these are actually quite big, big mechanical changes. They are going to change like the outcomes of team fights and stuff like that true sour true sight of the towers range reduced from 900 to 700 means here is like bounty you're gonna be able to sneak around them a little bit more um that's something that you could, you're gonna be able to see now as well with the new range that they put on it initial bounty no longer gives experience um i'm not too sure how this is going to work with regards to who they give it to i don't know if you still give it to the mid laner or if you give it to a support now because one of the, uh, you gave the initial bounty rune I'd say just as much for the experience as the uh, gold for the mid laner. Uh, a good mid laner is still going to be able to get the gold, so I don't know. I, you probably still give it to the mid laner, but I don't really know how much it's going to affect. But the one level difference does actually make quite a bit. Uh, the half level, sorry. Uh, it does actually affect it quite a bit. And you can't always guarantee that, especially in pubs as well. So this is more of a, uh, affects pubs than pros. I think pros are still going to split it a mid laner each. Melee hero attack range increased um, by a little bit. 22 really uh, don't really know what the purpose of this is not too sure but kind of cool uh, I do after looking over everything think this is a, a melee hero patch particularly in the strength and um, agility scope of things but like I said we'll get into that a bit further on uh, lane creep aggro duration increased from 2 to 5.5 seconds that means they follow you a little bit longer so if you aggro if you attack a hero, uh, an enemy hero near their creeps the creeps will follow you for half a second longer this means you have to let it the creep control um, and aggro thing is going to be sl changed slightly. So if you're, um, say if you're mid lane, your range versus range, what you tend to do is for people that don't know uh, about this, is you want to actually aggro the enemy creep. So you want to stand by the creeps, attack the hero and get his creeps to attack you and you pull them back. And then what this means is pretty much all of the creeps, the melee creeps are going to come around and start hitting your range creep. So your range creep will die faster. Therefore, if you do it properly, you're going to be able to get the creep wave back in your favour uh, easier than you used to because they do follow you for further. Uh, the cooldowns increase for uh, 2.5 seconds, so you have to get it right sooner because the cooldowns longer. Um, and moving on to this, the range creep is actually the most valuable creep now as well. Melee creep gold bounty reduced ever so slightly. Um, the range creep is unchanged. The melee and range creep gold bounty upgrade over time increased 1 to 2. So every 7.5 minutes you get a little bit more. Melee creep experience reduced drastically um, for me uh, from 62 down to 45. So melee creeps don't give anyone near as much experience, but range creeps give a lot more over double. So that's what I mean. The range creep is extremely valuable. So it's the t same total experience, as you can see there, but it just means you do not want that range creep denying at all. Um, it, that'll hurt a lot over the course of the laning phase so you want to make sure that you try and deny their range creep and get yours so this, this like i said a creep control thing this all ties into it it's all pretty important um the mechanic side of things there for lane control uh gonna affect all lanes really experience required to get from level eight to nine rescaled from six to twelve hundred eight to okay so This, I think if I forgot this right, it makes levels 8 to 9 quicker, meaning heroes that uh, max 2 abilities, so one like Death Prophet's been doing recently, just been maxing Siphon and um, Crypt Swarm will have that extra point, be able to get that extra point online a little bit sooner. Um, small change really there. Ethereal Blade now blocks in-flight projectiles fully rather than just the ones launched before Ethereal. Um, right, okay, so in-air projectiles basically if you can stop in air projectiles hitting you in ethereal blade so if someone like say someone's got like a dragon lance like uh, and they launch ethereal blade target you go into ghost mode 
um, like the craft fire or whatever and it blocks it which is how I feel it should have done anyway it just means you, you're able to to juke stuff a little bit better and disjoint it uh, evasion now uses pseudo random distribution um, this is like a thank god thing I've seen so many videos of PA um, dodging like 11 attacks in a row and stuff like that it's not, it's not the way it should work that's, that's obviously true random where like it's like a coin flip you are literally it's it's going to change eventually whereas this um, if for people that don't know this is pseudo random basically it scales up it starts at 50% if you evade attack your chance to evade the next one drops then if you evade another attack it drops again so you, the more you evade the lower your chance of evading the next attack is whereas and then if you take damage your chance of evasion increases so if you get hit five times in a row you then up to like 80% chance that the next one is going to miss so you're going to be able to, so good players are going to be able to predict this a lot better um, if you're farming a creep camp with the PA and every single one of them hits you and then you just cleave them and kill them all but all three of them have hit you there's a your chance has gone actually gone 50% up to I, I'm not too sure on the maths at all but it's like 60-70% so you've got more chance so if you go on someone you've got a higher chance of evasion once you evade something it gets reset um, I believe so yeah that pseudo random uh, everything is going towards this pseudo random thing as it I feel it really should do as well because um, it does get really annoying centaur corsair health reduced uh, so that's the small centaur and um, the arm has also been reduced to so the squishier they don't have as much health however there is now two of them in the centaur camps uh, they give exactly the same experience as they used to so this is a bit of a buff to the jungle uh, obviously they still hit as hard just as hard as well so they're uh, if anything they they are more of a hard camp than they used to be um, they give more gold and um, like i say it's more that they, they they hit harder but they there's going to be more attacks damage coming out of them but you're going to be able to kill the little ones faster uh, good for alchemist actually uh, roshan's magic resistance reduced so the spells that do pierce that are magical that pierce spell immunity so not pure ones and stuff like that are going to do more damage to roshan um, his HP has increased um, by quite a bit actually. He's got an extra 500 at the start and then he gains an extra 50 more per minute than he used to. So he's going to get even tankier, uh, even more HP as it goes on, so it's going to take longer. His experience bounty has been changed, so he gets less at the start. Um, he, he he starts with less, sorry, and then he ends up getting more. I think he's less experience before the 52. Okay, so basically, any time before the 52 minute mark, Roshang is less experienced than he ever used to. However, after the 52 minute mark, so if you're behind, taking Roshan means a lot after the 52 minute mark because you get more experience, it gives you a chance to catch up beforehand. If you're ahead, it doesn't really help you that much. Do you know what I mean? So, <coughs> early Rosh not as viable as it used to be, especially like level 1 Rosh. Because, like, you do a level, like, Ursa and IO could just duo it. It was, it's uh, an old tactic but it works and it gets you like level three straight away it's just you just go to lane just owning people it's ridiculous <coughs> double damage and haste no longer have special rules to for being spelled by spell immunity um <coughs> when you start to speak your bkb you get rid of it sorry <coughs> bad time to get a cough the following buffs are now purgeable nightmare spawn spiderlings malefice cold snap corrosive skin and leap movement speed buff so Debuffs here mostly that are purgeable, so something like Slark's Dark Pats. I feel like these always should have been. So if you run up to a Bane, you pounce him and you start Dark Pats, and if he nightmares you before that, you can Dark Pats out of it and end it rather than having to wake someone up. Or uh, Oracle can wake someone up from a nightmare without having to right click, you can just purge it. I always feel like these abilities should be this way because they are not ultimate abilities. Um, so this is obviously the first of the Invoker Nurse that we're going to see. Uh, but yeah, I feel like all these should have been purgeable, really, like buy stuff, buy dark pact, and some stuff like that. And this is the buff that's purgeable. So Marana leaps away, you can purge it off. Um, minor adjustments to cast range mechanics reduce overly long cast ranges when a target is moving quickly. Uh, they've not been very. It says minor, and minor doesn't mean very minor, but they they never like get quite clear on this sort of stuff. Allow illusions now bank benefit from damage damage block so you can now put you'll see later but van because it's going to sound weird at first but vanguard on pl is a viable thing because all of the illusions get the benefit benefit of the damage block you can tank for him and stuff like that so this also works for manta um this also will work for uh like i say any illusion heroes terribly and stuff like that but uh, vanguard is a viable build on a lot of heroes now and you will see why in a little bit 
<coughs> I think they try to bring it back in and I think this might <coughs> really do it um, captain's mode I'm actually gonna skip over this one and um, they've just changed the timings for your picking and the order that people pick this is something that's really confusing to be honest the way the, the word in it but we'll see it if you watch pros you'll watch it if you don't watch pros you're not really gonna care because no one plays it in um, ranked anyway <coughs> remove strong armor type and moved affected you affected units to soft type which is now being named to basic type <clears throat> Roshan armor type now from basic to hero um, what they're basically doing is there's a lot of <coughs> a lot of armor and damage types in Dota where they seem to be trying to do away with them so they've changed all these Dark Summoner is a tap type from pierce to hero now people used to pick Dark Summoner up because it did used to pier, pierce um, it used to hit like really hard that's now changed so it's not going to hit anywhere near as hard as it used to Thunder High Attack changed from basic to hero Dark Troll Summoner's damage reduced <coughs> Thunder Hide, so like again, the Dark Troll Summoner camp has been nerfed. Thunder Hide, attack damage reduced by a significant amount. Harpy Stormcrafter's Mana Pool reduced, that's the um, one that does like a little art knight and things. Saffir Tormentor Mana Pool reduced, that means the Hadouken, so this is, all these are nerfed to um, Chen and Enchantress. This needed to be done because you used to pick up a set tormentor at level one and just own any lane you decided to because you just walk up and hit people you couldn't kill it at level one it just throw hadoukens at you because it had a ridiculous amount of mana so this is really good i'm glad they've done this this is a decent balance like i say it's a nerf to chen and so they might fall off a little bit <coughs> they've actually been uh, nerfed in the patch as well again that'll be in the later video terrain Th this is the main reason i decided to redo this video is because i've been onto the map now and i now know what they're talking about adjusted the position of the bottom tip so radiant safe lane <coughs> has been moved a little bit um and it's moved the trees around as well you will notice it and it's a little bit weird it's kind of seems like it's a little bit more forward but i don't know if that's with whether they move the trees back and the tower forward a little bit but that's moved slightly Move around between the dire secret shop and the dire ancients further back a bit and made it a bit narrower so that's your ancient one and um, this ties into s an another one further down they have not ordered these well at all a lot of them tie in together and we'll talk about it in a minute so you move that back that's one like i say but like it says there by the secret shops is back a little bit a little bit narrower <coughs> increase the width of the ramp behind the radiant bottom tier two um that's the one up here again they've they broke these two up i don't know why put them together so that we know what area you're talking about it's really irritating um so you've increased the width of it that's the one in between the two camps um added in a new ramp to the left of the bottom dire tier one tower so that's dire off lane right this is basically where you've got roshan um and then above roshan you've got the ancients they basically shorten the gap of the roshan there's a little pathway that now goes up to into the, the lane into the dire off lane so you can walk so you can either this is i can't decide if this is a good or a bad thing so if you're like say tide hunter and you want to stack your ancients you can literally just walk down that little there's like a little ramp you can go down to your ancients which is really really nice however you can get ganked very easily from behind How, but it does balance out with the fact that there, if you think about it, there is actually one of the radiant secret shop you can come from the secret shop up the side and so yeah i think that's a little bit of a balancing but i think that could make dire off lane pr pretty pretty dangerous um new water spot in the middle of dire ancient jungle exactly what it says it's right in the middle as you go up into that little um area that splits off um into two there's it's like literally right there just to the like a bit further over to the right from the uh pull camp uh, the small camp on dire side it's like it's one of the big like tall tower ones as well matches up with having one in the in fact if anything though it's an extra one i was going to say it balances because there's one by the tier twos effectively but uh, um it's it's going to be easily dewarded to be fair it's a very obvious ward spot like really obvious but it's, it's going to give a lot of you know. um just did the spawn box to the right most radiant hard camp near the safe lane uh, i've had a look at this so i don't really uh, it's, it's a very minor tweak i think it's a little bit smaller uh, added tier three tower and racks move back right <coughs> it says very slightly <coughs> <coughs> really sorry tier three tower and racks move back it says very slightly it's really noticeable um it is a lot more dangerous going high ground you can't like you can obviously you can still stand at the bottom and attack like with like and, and siege it but you are still a little bit further forward it's a lot easier to initiate on people sieging your base um and like i said a lot more dangerous it says very slightly but it's very noticeable for me i really looked at it and went that's not slightly at all um so yeah high ground's going to be 
much riskier to, to push, especially if it's five on five. You have to try and get like a pick or win a fight outside the base first. Um, adjusted the Duke path in the clump of trees to the left of the Dire Tier 1 tower in the area close to the ramp. Di oh, Tier 1 mid tower. Yeah, um, this is like that little, yeah, and that little clump of trees is just like a little movement thing. There's a few of these little, little ones. Add a small hind spot to the trees to the top left of the Radiant Medium Camp near middle. Right, okay, yeah, there's all these little weird ones like where you'll go in and then you'll go up. Like the, you'll, it's like a little hook, do you know what I mean? And you'll go into trees that way. Good for hooks, actually. Slightly reduce the small mocks of the dire off lane neutral camp. Okay, yeah. So th a lot of small mocks have changed. It's, it is very, very slight, to be honest. Uh, added new paths to trees on the left of the Radiant Tier 1 tower. Uh, did I look at this one? I didn't actually go and look at this one. This is on uh, Radiant Safe Lane. Left. The top. Oh, no, sorry. No, no. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. This is uh, Radiant Off Lane. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's like basically you can. Where people used to blink into and stuff like that, where it's safe, you can now just walk into it. It's like all across next to like a little ledge thing. Um, a added passable areas in the trees below the bottom tier one radiant. Right, okay, yep, that's the tier two on radiant safe lane. There's like a little thing you can walk around the trees, basically. It's like a, a little row of trees that you can walk behind, just like literally directly below it. Space out radiant tier one four towers slightly. That is an actual slightly thing. I don't know if this is to match what it was like on Dire and they didn't notice or what, but there you go. I don't think it makes much difference. Added a small hiding spot to the trees above the bottom Radiant Tier 2 tower. Um, again, this is where you used to, where you normally TP into that would be slightly out of sight. Um, exactly there, there's like, like I say, it's one of these little hooks where you just go in and up and you're, you're in there. And there's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just there, but you, it'll still be seen by the high ground one. Uh, move Radiant mid creep spawn box back a little bit this is to deal with the movement and the things again this is we're talking about areas like when i say about this bottom there's three different things so far about the radiant tier 2 tower do you know what i mean it's like put them together so just so we're in we've got we're in our area an area in our minds and we can go right there there there, there, there done but this is it's all been done very confusingly moved radiant mid creep spawn back. yeah see i'm getting lost now um so yeah, that's been moved back. Removed a tree on the dire cliff right above. So top rune, just on the cliff above the top rune, there's trees that are missing. You used to be able to stand behind and put a ward down. And if there was already a ward there, you wouldn't be spotted by the enemy. Do you know what I mean? So the tree of block vision of it, it doesn't anymore. So which I think is fair enough because it used to be pretty sneaky though. Um, added two little trees in the radiant middle. So little clump of trees. You have got the radiant um, mid mid tower and radiant. There's a little clump of trees that everyone like runs and hides in between. There's two extra trees towards the actual middle of the lane um, I don't know if that's going to be more dangerous for people coming around to try and gank you or whether it's, I don't know, I think I think you'd take those trees out with tangos first to be honest um, so you can see people coming around there on you uh, rearrange clump of trees below the far right radiant hard camp to modify visibility lines for heroes nearby um, this is um, if you're radiant safe lane you used to harass from the little group of trees to the left of the lane, like directly on the other side of where the secret shop is on Radiant Safe Lane. You used to be able to stand in certain spots and just right click and they wouldn't be able to see you and it was an absolute pain. Now it's it's quite open. There's path there's like that you can see visually see like two paths leading into like a little into one. You can it's gonna be very difficult to harass from in there now without getting cut out for it. Um, like it says visibility lines. Added a new hiding spot to the right of the Dire Small Camp. This is another one of those little hooks. This is right by the uh, new uh, ward spot. So you can hook. Basically, you've got the camp there. You just hook behind it. I'm doing it from my point of view rather than like that. Um, fixed radiant offline neutral camp not always being visible with line of sight in front of them. <coughs> okay, yeah, that's like when you come out with it and you try and like hit it and there's like trees in the way. That's cool. Okay, so um, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I'll put a link into the next one. Um, so hopefully you guys will follow over.